was, uh, and when I read about it, when I read this article from the application, I was shocked to consider, to realize that the, bear, the justification for the Bearcat, um, part of it was, was the Occupy New Hampshire movement. And all of a sudden, I woke up. Um, <clears throat> I, I wasn't deeply involved in that. I was marginally involved in it. Um, but to find that I was a threat, a public threat, a daily threat, uh, I was really shocked. And it's, it's more disconcerting because according to its website, the Occupy Movement in New Hampshire no longer exists in an organized, functioning way. And so then this application is using a non-functioning organization to, to justify its application. Um, so for me then, the, if that's the case, when you're looking at the organization listed was never violent and presently is not functioning, then the current rationale for painting a bear cat is invalid from my perspective. Um, let's see, if I'm going to use Will's time, how much time? <laughs> <laughs> It's Will's last name, so I can take his card and pop it. Alright, keep on going. Alright, I'll do one more paragraph here. Some of us are concerned about the militarization of our police force. One website contrasts the difference between the creeds of the military and the police. It states that the military unit's mission is to deploy, engage, and then destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. That's the soldier's creed. The police creed, as some other people have said here tonight, is to protect and to serve. And so our understanding is, is that the training for this Bearcat comes from the military. And so with training from the military and, and the use of the Bearcat, we're concerned that it's an easy for the military creed of conduct to start overcoming the police creed of conduct. And that, that concern is heightened when we look at what the acronym for Bearcat stands for. The acronym stands for Ballistic Engineered Armored Response Counter Attack Truck. It was presented here tonight as a rescue truck. I hope that they get it, it's used that way. But it's designed to be a military attack vehicle to destroy the enemy. And, and so given that, since a number of us here have been designated the enemy, we have some concern about that. <laughs> so, I think that's why, where I will end. But I, I do appreciate your time. I do appreciate being able to be heard here. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Brian Blackton. I only have one minute and a half, I guess, so I really can't get into everything I wanted to get into. Um, part of my problem is with some of the lies in the application. I would uh, actually, could you sit down first? Sure. And, uh, introduce yourself and state your name. My name is Brian Black, and I live in Ward 4, and I own a business here in Concord, and I have a problem with some of the lies in the application. I would direct your attention to number 33 fraud and read that before you vote yes. Uh, some of these things are very pink in the application here, and I know I only have a limited amount of time. Some of them seem very self-serving. Um, the Department of Homeland Security requires all agencies to, com to comply with MIMS for a tactical team to be in compliance with NIMS and qualify as a Type 2 team. So basically, the Concord Area SWAT team wants to be a Homeland Security Type 2 SWAT team. That's self-serving. That's not people serving. Uh, he, uh, Chief also stated it took three hours to get the response to uh, his uh, other situation, I believe they called Belknap County. I talked to uh, the captain over at the uh, SWAT team with the state police the other day, and he was a little shocked. He said, wow, we have a Lenko. We could have been there in a whole lot shorter than three hours. And they said that the state police are available for every community in the state. 
well, if we have a Lenco up on Hazen Drive, why do we need a new one for the city of Concord? Because it's the newest model. And it's the newest model that, according to letter K, um, will be the only one in the region and readily available for mutual aid requests and assistance. And I'm assuming that's outside of 20 towns that the state police could already handle from Hazen Drive. And the chief has also said he needs protection from 50 caliber rounds. In case any of you don't know what a 50 caliber round is, I'd like to show you. It's called an anti-aircraft round. And it's this big one right over here. Okay, that takes down planes and, and big armored vehicles and stuff like that. It's a military round, a 50 caliber round. And I just want to let you know that Cal Draga used this little tiny one right here. Okay, this is a 223. Cal Draga used this. The chief wants protection from that big one down on the end. Okay. The average time for the Bearcat to respond to a unit, even if it's in Congress, 15 to 20 minutes. That's not going to save the life of any officer responding, responding to a scene because the average bulletproof vest will do this to a rifle round. It goes through them. So unless the department is going to spend $256,000 on Type 4 level body armor for individual officers, I think it's a whole waste of money to get a bear cat when you're thinking about protection of officers' lives. Because my little bad artwork down here, again, the six. There's eight guys, little blue dots here. There's eight guys in a bear cat. They have to get out of that bear cat at some point to get the bad guy. They need body armor to do that. Or you can spend that kind of money and have 50 officers protected properly to go after the one bad guy. So if you're thinking about spending $258,000, I would rather protect 50 people than eight. Thank you, Mr. Is that a, a standard? Issue. This is the standard That's, level. What is that? A, an insert that goes in between the black part of the vest? Yeah, this is just the insert that goes in there. That was actually mine when I worked for the state. Um, so what are you suggesting? Well, uh, uh, better armored vests? Well, if, if I were wanting to protect my officers and having them not be able to go up a driveway because there's shooting going on and waiting for a vehicle for however long and having citizens be in danger, I would think the city or the police might want to look at having level four body armor in every cruiser in town. What, in, I, what do they have now? Um, most officers wear level three A vests. That's generally what most of What's them the have. What's the cost of a level four vest? A uh, level four vest, conservatively, about three to four thousand dollars. You can get a level four body armor. It's about the same price as the level three. Um, no, no, no. The level three is about eight hundred bucks. Level three A. A level three, there's a difference, there's three, three A and level four. Level three A is actually less protective than the level three. The level three A is what most officers wear. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Thank you very much. Uh, next is Tim Bauman. Good evening. I'm uh, Tim Bauman. I live up on the Primrose Drive up in Pentecook, uh, and uh, Jennifer Kredovic is my counselor, and uh, Steve Trivel, I believe, is my, my rep. Um, I think most everyone else has covered, you know, a lot of the issues in regards to the particular groups being pointed out, and it seems there may be a, a resolution to that. That does not, however, resolve some of the issues regarding the emphasis on community policing. Uh, the gentleman over there in the, the, the vest, I think, stated things very well, very rationally. Uh, the gentleman who also spoke, spoke earlier, um, who had been in Fallujah, you know, related the issues to you, the difference between the military and, and community policing. I, that really, I think, is the main emphasis I want. I, I guess I didn't know how much I had grown to appreciate the character of Concord the six years that I've been here um, until I felt it was being threatened. And that threat seems to be coming from, from, this, from this approach um, to, to policing and, and not from what I see every day around me, which is a friendly uh, neighborhood. That's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Neil Connor. Oh, uh, Neil Connor. I had elected not to speak. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Leah Waltzko. Sorry if I mispronounced your last name. Leo Waltzko? Waltzko. Waltzko. Thank you. Jeff Hart. 
try not to repeat. I'm Leah Walchko. I live in Manchester. I do pay federal taxes, though, so I feel I have something to add to this discussion. I'd like to talk about numbers for a second that haven't been discussed before. I mean, the $17 trillion we spoke of and um, other things like that. Um, I understand that the police officers run toward danger, and that is a that's an admirable thing. That's what heroes do. But we need to put things into perspective when we govern, and like the prayer that you started your meeting with today, you have to weigh everything and use justice as your measuring stick. The Department of the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports every year the 10 most dangerous jobs in America. Police force members are not on that list. Taxi drivers are, roofers are, uh, who else do we have? Farmers, garbage collectors are more likely to be seriously injured or killed in the line of their duty. So I understand the police officers want the most up-to-date equipment that they can get. That makes sense from their perspective. But your perspective is one of justice. And that same money that will be used and can't be spent again could buy, instead, 182 New Hampshire residents food stamps for a year. It could buy one year's Section 8 housing for 60 average recipient families in this state. It could buy one year's disability payments for eight 100% injured veterans that have come home from serving us overseas. It could buy 32 single parent, two child families TANF assistance for a full year. These two are real threats. Hunger is a real threat. You can die from that as well. I ask you to weigh with justice and rationality and not be driven by blind fear. One last little set of statistics for us to put some things in perspective. I don't know if I have my, I, I heard Chris Booth say that every couple of years someone dies in Concord. I did some investigation and all I could find was in 2011 there was a single murder and you had to go back to 2004 before that. Two people since 2004 have been murdered in this city. You are, and this is from the federal government as well, National Safety Council, your chance of dying from a hornet stinging you is 1 in 71,000. Your chances of dying by being struck by lightning are 1 in 126,000. And your chances of dying from a terrorist attack are 1 in 20 million. So we need to put the brakes on the fear. And we need to act rationally. Terrorism works because it makes people irrational and it makes them destroy themselves. That's what's happening. Thank you. You alluded to the things that could, the, the money could be better spent on, but do you believe that that actual federal money would ever be spent on anything except uh, for safety? Yes, I do. I think you have a chance in this room right now for a small victory of rational thought and that it could encourage other small town councils in this state and across this country to do the same thing. I've spent some time in Concord testifying in front of state lawmakers and what I hear them is they tell me go talk to this go talk to your people that go to DC. I come here I'm told go talk to them. There never seems to be any place to go to put the brakes on everybody running our country. You want to know what the real danger is? Cast your glance over to Detroit. Take a look at what's happening in countries that are going bankrupt over in Europe. We, we have real danger coming. Yes, I do think that it's possible that if we made the right decision here, and I implore you to do that, and I don't mean to now make anybody angry, and I'm not a member of the Free State Project, but if I lied on a government form, I wouldn't be able to fix it with a little side deal. I would be held accountable. I want that form withdrawn at the Department of Homeland Security.